Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out some Linux gaming performance on the small form factor PC I recently put together. I did a full build video, I'll leave a link in the description, but in that video we ran Windows on this unit. Now the main claim to fame to this is obviously the form factor, I mean this thing is super small, and the GPU. I'm a huge fan of the new Radeon RX 6400, and that's exactly what we have in here. I've done a few videos so far with the RX 6400 showing off performance, but I have yet to test Linux gaming performance, and that's exactly what we're going to do for this one. I'll be running Manjaro, and I always opt to use the KDE Plasma version. Personally, I just like the way it looks. We've got tons of different themes that we can install here, and as you can see, I've got a cool little theme installed. And overall, this little setup has been handling Linux really well. And since I'm running Manjaro, we're using Arch. And to play all of these games, we're going to use Steam and Steam Play, or Proton. And i got to say, I've actually run into a couple games that do perform better with Proton than Windows on this setup. So before we jump into it, I wanted to give you a look at this unit. As you can see, I've got everything stuffed in here. It's a super small form factor case, and with this, I did have to use the Pico power supply. Give you a quick rundown on the specs, but like I mentioned, I did a full build video, so if you're interested in checking that out, link is in the description. So for the CPU, I opted to use the Ryzen 5600X, but if you wanted to go with just the 5600, you should get about the same performance. I'm not doing any overclocking here. With a max boost clock up to 4.6 GHz, I've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3600 megahertz, obviously in dual channel. The Radeon RX 6400, and this is the low profile single slot version, that way we can make it fit in here. It's the XFX Swift 105, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. For the motherboard, I opted to use an ASRock B550 Mini ITX. We've got a 300 watt Pico power supply. The case is a goodie sorry SR01. You can pick these up on Amazon for pretty cheap. And for the operating system, I opted for Manjaro with the KDE Plasma desktop. All right, so a few little things here. Got NeoFetch up and running. As you can see, we've got that 5600X. I haven't done any kind of tweaking in the BIOS. The only thing I did was set the XMP on the RAM so we could get up to 3600 megahertz. One thing I always like to use is Mango HUD when it comes to Linux gaming. And this is actually a full package called Goverlay and it will allow you to display all of your metrics. Let me go ahead and run this while you're playing a game. That way we can see exactly what's going on. We get our FPS, we get the wattage on the GPU. Unfortunately, this is not showing the wattage on the CPU, but that's all right. All of our cores, RAM, all that good stuff, and you can enable it globally. That way it'll show up in your Steam games when you start running them, because everything's gonna be running through Proton. And yeah, I highly recommend installing this if you wanna do some Linux gaming. Just gives you a good idea of what's going on with the game while it's running. So yeah, no performance profiles or anything like that set up with Manjaro right now. But uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to start out with The Witcher 3. Alright, so first up we have The Witcher 3, 1080p, Ultra Settings. We're getting an average of 75 FPS. Looking great here. Uh, everything's working really well. And at first I actually went into this at high settings, but I was getting such a great That's frame rate at about 92 average. I figured... We'd go ahead and turn it up to Ultra, and as you can see, this will be fully playable on a system like this. And again, I can't get the CPU wattage to display with Mango HUD, but we are getting that GPU wattage, and it can get up there for a smaller card. I mean, we're only at 42 watts, not that bad, but remember, it's a low-profile single-slot 6400. Here we have God of War 1080p original settings. I've got FSR set to quality, and with this, we can get an average of 72 FPS. Turning FSR off and V-Sync on does do a great job at kind of locking it at 60, but every once in a while I do see a dip down to around 56. So that's why I turn it to quality, and we're getting great performance. Checking out Injustice 2, we're at 1080p high, and every once in a while I do see a dip, and I really think it comes down to those shaders in the background, but uh, overall it does perform really well at these settings, and to tell you the truth, we could probably take some of these up to Ultra and still get a really steady frame rate out of it. With the RX 6400, we only get 4 gigabytes of VRAM, and with something like Doom Eternal, it just won't allow us to go up to Ultra. It gives us that VRAM warning. So we're at high here, and even at Ultra, I think we'd still dip down a bit. With everything set to high, 1080p and no resolution scale, we still get under 60. So taking some of those settings to medium is probably going to be the way to go with this.
Project Cars 2, completely understand it's an older game, but I personally still play it. Love this one. I prefer playing this over Project Cars 3, but that's just me. We're at 1080p high, and we're getting an average of 108 FPS, so there's still a lot more to go. We could take a lot of these settings that I have set to high, up to ultra, and still get 60 out of it. Okay, so checking out Cyberpunk 2077, and I can tell you for sure that it does perform better in Linux with this setup than it does in Windows. Not sure exactly what's going on here. But here it is at 1080p low settings with FSR set to quality. We're getting an average of 88 FPS. Now I'd say turning FSR off and locking VSync on will be the way to play this game on a setup like this in Linux. We can get a constant 60 out of it, and it looks really good. Even though we're at low settings, it still looks amazing, and it plays just fine on this setup. Playing the same game in Windows on the same exact setup we have here, 1080p low with Cyberpunk 2077, I get an average of around 51 FPS. We just can't quite hit 60, but in Linux, we can lock this and get a steady 60 out of it. And finally, Elden Ring, 1080p low, it's going to play at 60 all day with these settings. And even with this, we can go with a low-medium mix and still get a steady 60 out of it. But I also tried just a free set of medium, and we only averaged around 56 FPS. If you've tried this game on lower-end hardware, you know how hard it can be to run. But with this here in Linux, it works great. I also wanted to throw a little bit of emulation in here, and first up we have Wii using the Dolphin emulator. I'm just at 1440p using the Vulcan back end, but in previous videos we were able to do this at 4K, and on this system here, it will do GameCube and Wii at 4K no problem at all. And even when it comes to PS3 and the harder to emulate stuff, the RX 6400 can handle those resolutions, but the game's performance really comes down to your CPU, and the 5600X can definitely handle PS3, even with something like Skate 3 that relies heavily on those extra threads and higher core clocks. Here it is at 1080p, Vulcan back in, looking really good. So far, I've done a few videos showing off the performance of the RX 6400 in Windows, and this has definitely turned out to be my favorite low-profile single-slot GPU ever made. A lot of people dismiss this card because it's not a top-of-the-line card, and I completely understand that. The price on this is around 160 and it is giving us the same kind of performance we could get out of the GTX 1650. And of course, since this is a single-slot design, it will fit in cases that the GTX 1650 low-profile just won't, because that's kind of a dual-slot card with the taller heatsink on it. And if you do a quick search online trying to find a low-profile GTX 1650 for sale, they're going anywhere from $280 up to $350, so the price is much higher than the RX 6400. But I really do love this card, and I think it's perfect for small form factor builds if you know exactly what you're getting into. It's not a 1440p card, it's not a 4K card, and even with some of the higher-end AAA games, at 1080p you might have to drop some of those settings down, but I think it does a great job for what it is, and as you saw in Linux, it does perform really well for its size and power consumption. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Just wanted to show this off. I think it did a great job in Linux. And there's more we could test on this. So if there's anything else you want to see running on the RX 6400 or this system specifically, let me know what it is in the comments below. And if you're interested in putting together a little rig like this, I will leave links to everything used in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.